uh, Joanne in Orlando? Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm doing pretty good. But, I mean, is it also true, though, I mean, in the New Testament, when Jesus dies and commits the ultimate sacrifice, a lot of these laws that were in effect during the Old Testament were bypassed, they were dropped, because we the were sacrificial, the New Testament. The sacrificial laws, traditionally within Orthodox Christianity, it's the sacrificial laws that were eliminated by the sacrifice, not the moral laws. Are you, are you implying that, that the Ten Commandments are null and void? Well, no, definitely not. That well, carried over. I mean, he, but Jesus states that to follow the Ten Commandments. And right. the number one, of course, is to love thy neighbor, you know, as... You Actually, know. no, that's not number one. Number one is thou shalt have no other gods before me. But no, when Jesus states that, he says to follow the Ten Commandments, and also he states the new law, which is, of course, love thy neighbor. Okay. But he also said that he, Matthew, he wasn't there to change the law. Matthew 5, 18 and 19 talks about the, it's, it's right, right at the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, um, that not a jot or tittle of the law will be changed until heaven and earth have passed away, and that anybody who breaks even the least of those commandments will be the least in heaven. Jesus' you know, message in there in no way says, hey, we're going to toss out the, the Old Testament. Um, what the fulfillment of the law traditionally was you no longer have to sacrifice animals. God is basically, uh, even though he enjoys the smell of burning blood, um, he's, he's over that and you don't have to keep making those sacrifices because this has been made for you. But the moral instructions don't change and there's no indication in the New Testament that the laws pertaining to, for example, uh, killing witches or homosexuality or slavery were changed at all. And the Bible blatantly, clearly advocates slavery, tells you who you can enslave, how much you can pay for them, and how much you can beat them. That's never trumped in the New Testament. If anything, it's made worse. In 1 Peter 2.18, it's, it's, there's an instruction there for slaves to obey their masters with respect, particularly if the masters are cruel. Now, this sort of soft apologetic that uh, modern Christians seem to have of, oh, Jesus is all about love your neighbor as yourself and love one another, and we got rid of all that old stuff. It's hogwash. It's nonsense. It, to, the idea that we can just chuck aside the Old Testament, not only does it chuck away any potential claims of prophecy that support your New Testament, um, it chucks out the entirety of the moral law. It's, it's pick a recent, and choose it's a recent invention, religion, right? and it's fine. If that's what somebody wants to do, I mean, if, if, if there are good people who would say, I think the Bible's wrong about slavery and um, genocide and all of these other things, and I'm just going to focus on these particular passages that, that are attributed to Jesus because I think that they are a good way to live. That's, that's perfectly fine, and, and I'll applaud them all day long for chucking out the obvious immoral stuff. But if they're going to run around and use the same label as other people, all they're doing is sowing confusion. It's not my fault that there are a thousand different Christian denominations out there. All of them believe something different. And these ten are engaged in attempting to uh, sideline the rights of everybody else based on their own beliefs. And these 20 um, are in favor of, you know, bombing abortion clinics. And these three over here are okay with gays uh, because they've done their, you know, it's absurd. And t there's no, like I said, there's no way for an outside observer to tell. And there seems to be no intervention from the God they believe in to clarify this to anybody. And so it ends up making the entire institution look bad, which is why, you know, I didn't, I, I'm not thrilled with overgeneralizing because there are plenty of, you know, good and reasonable Christians. But it's a, it's a legitimate uh, complaint. You've got to clean your own house if you don't want people to, to lump everybody in one bucket. Okay, yeah, um, definitely. I, I mean, I can definitely agree with you there. But, I mean, are you saying that um, the world would be better without the belief of God? Yes. I think so, too. I, I'm convinced but, that I mean, that's the case. What, what about um, a lot of the people in the world who actually draw hope from the fact that there is a God? There, there's a study done recently uh, that looks at uh, the religious belief in first world nations, uh, Europe and the United States and, and some of the 
some of the countries in the Americas and Australia, of course. And it correlates, it, it looks at the, the rates of religious beliefs in these countries versus various social ills like abortion rates, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, homicide, infant mortality, uh, teenage pregnancy, and all these things. And on all of these things, religious belief is correlated with the, the ill. That is, belief... Uh, as belief increases, societal health decreases. And right. while you can't draw a, a causal link, there's a strong correlation there. But to your specific question about drawing hope from it, um, I understand a lot of people do. And, and it seems to be, especially if you're doing it, a good thing. But there's a, a, an old quote that the, and, and there's a, a lot of claims about Christians being happier than other people. And there's, there's a quote that Russell, Russell referenced yesterday, which is, um, the fact that a believer is happier than a non-believer is no more to, to the point than that a drunk is happier than someone who's sober. And you can draw hope from all kinds of things. I understand you can, you can control behavior with a lie. You can make somebody feel good with a lie. You can ease anguish and fear and mourning with a lie. It happens all the time. Um, it doesn't change the fact that it's a lie. And it's my personal view. Uh, I would prefer the truth. I would also by and large prefer a world that prefers the truth. I would not make any attempt... But to, to, to kind of quote a few good men, some people can't handle the truth. Maybe. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It, and, and we talked about so, this... Some people might need to grow up. We, 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 talked, <laughs> about, we, talked, we talked about this yesterday. Um, this idea that there are some people who just need it. Um, it may be the case that... Uh, I mean, not, not to get too personal, there's, but... There's, like, it, in, an example, I mean, my father being, you know, um, a veteran of um, many wars and retired, I mean, at one point really just wanted to put a bullet in his head. But it was because of his faith in God that he would get through it and, you know, that God was with him that moved him to the next level. And, and I understand that. My, my thing is that when people say that, they, that people need religion, that they couldn't cope without it, etc., um, the reason I think this is well, some people. There, there, sure, um, it's the it's the it's the it's the huge excuse that there are some people who need this. I think that is a fundamental lie, and the truth is that in much the same way that I can't build a car engine because I haven't been taught how to do it, so I need to rely on my mechanic. That's the same argument that people are using with respect to religion. And instead of giving them the religion that seems to do something for them, in this case it's not like a mechanic because it's not actually doing anything, it's just telling you it did something. Instead of doing that, we need to give people the tools with which they can take control of their lives, they can deal with reality, they can learn to cope. Make better decisions. I, I think that truth is always going to be preferable to fiction. I do not deny the fact that lies can be used to positive conclusions uh, on occasion. I just don't like them. It's just fraught with manipulation. Anything else? Um, no, that's everything. Um, it's really been um, fun talking with you guys. Thank and you, I'll Joanne. definitely be watching your show. Thank Appreciate you, Joanne. It. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Bye.